Welcome to Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk. I'm Rodney Nigel Mayfield. We got a hot show for you tonight. Did God create marriage? Rodney Nigel Mayfield versus Kevin Samuels. So let's get to it. to the show. Now, I'm fully aware that this show topic is already polemical. This is not an ad hominem attack on Mr. Kevin Samuels, but this is a reaction video and a critical critique of the position he took when he said, God did not create marriage and God did not create divorce. This topic is controversial to some and much anticipated to others who want to hear the biblical explanation that is polar opposites of Mr. Samuel's viewpoint. Nevertheless, the show must go on. Again, the show topic is, did God create marriage? Rodney Nigel Mayfield versus Kevin Samuels. I will utilize the word of God only and give you biblical scripture, both chapter and verse, to defend God's word as true and to disprove Kevin Samuel's statement that God did not create marriage because if God created marriage, God would be responsible for all divorces. Samuels went on to say, God is not responsible for divorce because God did not create marriage. Okay, let's see what God has to say about this. I will disprove Mr. Samuels' statements as false, misleading, misinformed, and plain nonsensical and with no spiritual discernment or revelation knowledge of God's word on this topic. There's about 30% of the things that Mr. Samuel said in his collection of videos that I've listened to that I actually agree with him on, but this particular topic is not one of them. 70% of the content he spoke on related to dating and relationship advice was unbiblical, out of bounds, and geared toward garnering likes, clicks, and views. Now, Kevin Samuels was a popular, well-known, yet controversial YouTuber. Who is no longer with us. He was and is still loved by some and despised by others. Listen, my heartfelt condolences go out to his family for their loss. My prayer is for God's peace that surpasses all human understanding, comfort them, and that God's everlasting loving arms of compassion embrace them all in Jesus' name. Let us bow for a moment of silence out of respect. Mr. Samuels left a plethora of video content that can and will be scrutinized by many over the coming years. Most of the rhetoric he spouted, I disagree with biblically and vehemently, along with a ton of other YouTubers disseminating carnal and worldly dating and relationship advice that was and is still harmful, irresponsible, and misleading to those single women and men, and also married women and men who are seeking sound, practical, and genuine life coaching advice for the betterment of their relationships. As a fair-minded man who studies the Word of God, I've listened to Kevin Samuels' content roughly for about eight months in order to dissect his dating advice to both women and men. After careful review, my assessment is that his advice on dating and relationships for the most part, is worldly, secular, carnal, and was not based on anything biblical relating to God's word. Most of his advice is not to be trusted nor taken seriously. Therefore, it's only incumbent upon me to disprove these things Mr. Samuel said out of his own mouth relating to this show topic. This is not personal, folks. This is biblical. So put on your seatbelts and get your Bibles and popcorn ready because it's about to go down. Here's the entire God Did Not Create Marriage video clip featuring Kevin Samuels. 
Marriage is a natural choice because if marriage was a spiritual choice, God would be responsible for all the divorces, and He is not. But God created marriage. No, He did not. Uh, yes, He. No, did. He didn't. Okay, you're gonna argue. Okay. I'm not gonna you're, argue. You're 24. Okay, you're not gonna argue with me because one, I know what I'm talking about, and I can. First of all, even if you're a Christian, you shouldn't be arguing with me in the first place. I'll be correct. Were, were Adam and correct. Eve married? Yes. Who performed the ceremony? Jesus did. Are you serious? God, a Adam and Eve were married? There was only yep. one person on the planet. It was Adam. God put him to sleep and he re wrote, went inside of him, took out a rib and said, flesh of my flesh. He, he made Eve. He, he presented Eve to Adam. They didn't get married. Who, 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 who did the ceremony? Simba? Point number one. Kevin Samuel said, God did not create marriage because if God created marriage, he's responsible for all the divorces. Samuel said, God is not responsible for the divorces because God did not create marriage. Let me say this. Marriage is a God institution. It's established by God for mankind, but not established by mankind. Kevin Samuel's contingent is that God did not create divorce because God did not create marriage. This doesn't make any biblical sense at all because God did create marriage and God also created divorce. But God is not responsible for the people who get divorced. I will explain all this throughout the video. Just stay tuned. God designed marriage, not man. Marriage was God's idea, not man's idea. God created mankind to glorify him, to worship him, and to be fruitful and multiply and replenish and subdue the earth. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now, the Greek word suitable means appropriate, proper, right, convenient, fit, and congruent. Adam didn't know what it was to be alone, but God knew that it wasn't good for the man to be alone. God created animals and gave Adam the authority to name all the animals, but God said the animals were not suitable for Adam in Genesis chapter 2, verse 20. Remember this point. Whatever God speaks, it manifests in the heavens or in the earth, and therefore it's established. In other words, it is so because God said so. Also remember, God creates everything in its original form for his original intention. It's set in stone and anything contrary to that standard deviates from the word of God and it's sin. Also note, whenever God says something is not good, like when he said it's not good for the man to be alone, that means it's either sin or it's not beneficial or expedient. And in this case, it wasn't sin that Adam was alone, but it was not beneficial for Adam to be alone because he could not be fruitful and multiply and replenish and subdue the earth as God desired without a suitable helper. Therefore, God created Adam a suitable and compatible helper, a wife of like kind and clearly of the opposite gender, which was purposeful. Note that God did not create another man for Adam because another man was not suitable for Adam. Two men cannot be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. It's against nature. Romans chapter 1 verses 26 through 27 and Leviticus chapter 18 verses 22 through 23. Now, those that accept and acknowledge God's truth know that originally, and traditionally, a wife is a female and a husband is a male, which God also defined, thereby establishing this precedence from the beginning of creation. God is the one who defines manhood and womanhood, not the culture. Understand that, people. God is the one who defines manhood and womanhood, not the culture, not the president, not the pope, not the politicians, but God. The Bible says that the Lord God caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep 
And while he was sleeping, God took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man Adam. You see, God created Eve as a fully grown woman who was perfect and without sin. And God presented Eve to Adam as his wife and Adam as Eve's husband. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 23, the man said, the man Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. Eve was taken out of Adam, okay? Let's stop here for a second. Whenever Adam spoke, the Bible always said that Adam said or the man said, depending on the translation. The next verse in Genesis chapter two, verse 24, Adam did not speak these words, but God spoke them because if Adam spoke them, the Bible would have clearly indicated that Adam spoke. All right, Genesis chapter two, verse 24 reads, this is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they became one flesh. If Adam spoke these words, it would read as such. This is why I left my father and mother and I am united to my wife and we became one flesh. Adam didn't know anything about a natural father because he never had a natural father, nor did he have a natural mother. Adam only had a spiritual father, which was God the father who created him from the dust of the earth. Adam was not all knowing people, therefore, he would not have known anything about a father or a mother at that particular point in his existence to make the above statement in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, this is the beginning of the establishment of the institution of marriage, which clearly shows that God established this institution, not Adam, not man. Adam didn't know anything about marriage, Therefore, God established this spiritual institution, not man. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, whatever God spoke into existence, it was so. God said, let there be light, and there were lights. When God said, let there be stars in the heavens, there were stars in the heavens. When God said, let there be waters on the earth, there were waters on the earth, and it was so. And God said, it was good. And in today's vernacular, how we say it, it was all good. If God can't create everything from nothing, which he did, God can definitely perform a marriage ceremony in the spirit realm between two human beings he created from scratch for the purpose of glorifying him, worshiping him, and being fruitful and multiplying and replenishing and subduing the earth. Now, Kevin Samuel said that Adam and Eve were not married. Well, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 20, it reads, The man gave his wife the name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. Now, how many of you know a woman can't be a wife unless she's legally married? And God, the creator who makes all the laws, married them in the spirit realm in the Garden of Eden when he gifted Eve to Adam. God is the legal authority of marriage because he created the institution, not man. Again, in Genesis chapter three, verse six, it says, and Eve gave the forbidden fruit also unto her husband, Adam, who was with her and he did eat. Now, how many of you know that a man can't be a husband unless he's legally married? Again, God the Creator married both Adam and Eve in the spirit realm in the Garden of Eden when he gifted Eve to Adam as his wife. You see, God is a spirit and those that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4 verse 24. When God speaks anything, he speaks it in the spirit realm to then manifest in the heavens or in the earth or both. When God made up in his mind to create Adam a wife and then gifted Eve to Adam, that was the marriage ceremony conducted by God. 
Because whatever God speaks or whatever he puts his hands to for his purpose, it is so. It is established and it is good. Folks, marriage is only intended for this earthly realm, not the heavenly realm. And there will be no marriages between a man and a woman when Christians enter heaven. There will only be one marriage in heaven, and that's the marriage supper of the Lamb, which is the consummation of the union between Christ and the church. You can find that in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, in Revelations chapter 19, verses 1 through 14. Kevin Samuel said God did not create divorce. Yes, he did. God created divorce as a remedy for a married man or woman to void the marriage covenant they made before God due to a violation of that covenant. But God does not cause or nor is he responsible for divorce. That decision falls on the party or parties in that marriage. But God prefers there be reconciliation of that marriage between the man and the woman, if possible. Kevin Samuel said that if God created marriage, he's also responsible for all the divorces. Well, look at it this way. The same God that created marriage also created divorce. That's biblical. The same God that created heaven also created hell. That's Bible. If the God that created marriage would be responsible for all the divorces, as Kevin Samuels wrongly said out of his own mouth, then that same God who created heaven and also created hell would be the cause of all people that die and go to hell. No! Yes or no? Oh, no. Yes or no, people? I can't hear you. Absolutely not. God doesn't cause people to get divorced and God doesn't cause people to go to hell. When people get divorced, it's because of their own choosing. When people go to hell, it's because of their own choosing not to repent of their sins, confess and believe in their hearts on Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, and they choose to reject Christ's free gift of salvation that he extends to all humanity who would receive it. Now, if this video has blessed you, and was helpful to your understanding, please like, share, subscribe, and support this channel. Thank you, and God bless you.